about Palm Springs Interfaith Ministries, where we believe there is a power for good in the universe greater than we are. We are using it. We're, we know that nothing happens by chance, don't we? I mean, we want to kind of deny it, think this was a chancy thing that happened, and uh, I had nothing to do with it. But if we're in it, we have something to do with it. So when we say nothing happens by chance, everything is by divine appointment. We open that space of consciousness and take responsibility for our lives because we know the twin of responsibility is freedom to experience our life on a completely higher level than the way that we've always done it. And we're about growing and unfolding in the truth that sets us free to be who we are. So when we look at the law of attraction, of vibration and resonance, and the resonance of relationship, which we're talking about relationships today, and I always say I'm an expert at relationships, because I've had so many. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was married for 12 years, and almost 12 years, and uh, to a saint. And I'm not saying that because he passed on. He was, he was amazing. And he made his transition, he had cancer, and uh, when our baby was three days old, he was called downstairs for a routine x-ray through the Board of Education. He taught fifth grade English as a second language in a Title I school. And energetically, you know, he said, I just got to go down and get this done because the one at the school said there's like a little cloud, it's probably nothing. And when I arrived home, the phone rang. I went to the phone, and he said, this is Dr. Phillips from Kaiser. Your husband is in stage four cancer. He needs to get in here immediately. And then my husband uh, got on the phone, and I've never heard him swear, but uh, that doctor got an airful. And then I heard, and my wife has just had a baby who's three days old. I'll see you in a week. And he came in, I said, you know, what is this all about? You're just the picture of health. And uh, so he shared what they had discovered uh, uh, in his lymph nodes. And he looked down at this little baby, Trisha Lurie, and he said, I have so much to live for. And I do not accept this diagnosis. We are both in Science of Mind 1. And Science of Mind 1, it's like the honeymoon of the Science of Mind courses because you get to learn treatment. You can look at these appearances and these conditions and these effects that show up. You deny their reality. Is it a fact? Yes, it's a fact. It showed up on the x-ray. It's a fact. Is it a spiritual reality? No, because facts can be changed. And believe me, in the 41 years of my ministry, and all the energy that's come to me and sat with me, HIV positive, all the, the memorial services I did in the 80s every single week of someone who passed of AIDS. And to reconcile this and to say, what is this really about? And for me, it's about the planet, the consciousness of the planet learning unconditional love. To see through these appearances, these conditions, and these effects. So when relationships occur, we bring all of our unfinished business to the altar of relationship. Believe me, two halves don't make a whole. They don't. And you're never going to fill the hole in the soul. But two holes come together, and what happens? It expands our circle of life. And how many times when we haven't seen someone, we say, oh, they're in a relationship. We haven't seen them there. Oh, yes, yes, they're in a relationship. What? <laughs> they're in a relationship, not to implode on themselves, but to expand the energy of love. Unconditional love, which our ground of being is God, whatever we conceive our God to be. So when my husband passed away, it's really interesting. I had so much unfinished business with my father, my alcoholic father, my abusive father that I went into a relationship with someone. He was a politician in San Diego, and very good looking and very dashing and all of that. And I took all my unfinished business with me. He took all his unfinished business, his alcoholic father. And we came together, and it was really a very tumultuous relationship. Because when you have unhealed issues, you bring it there. And until you deal with it, you can work through it, come out on the other side, but usually not with that person. It's really interesting because it falls apart because it's not a vibrational. When one heals, it's not longer a vibrational match. 
were mismatched suddenly. And it was interesting, uh, I was going through a divorce and I never thought that I would ever uh, do that. And uh, I had 3,000 people coming every Sunday in San Diego. We got into our 22,000 square foot facility. And I was rounding off 163 to go into our facility. And I saw this huge sign, and some of you know the story, saw the huge sign where my uh, politician, soon to be ex-husband, uh, was running for Congress and put it on the church property, this huge sign <laughs> on the corner as I'm rounding the corner. I pull in the car, put on the brakes, I, go, I step out, I take the sign and I'm going like this, like this, like this, like this. And I stopped on it. Then went in and gave the greatest, amazing talk on unconditional love I ever did. And, uh, then I said, a funny thing happened on the way to the church. <laughs> and I shared the story. Of course, everybody's in the aisles. And I said, so I think I have more work to do on this. <laughs> so when we get a reaction within ourselves and unfinished business, we got to go to the original source and heal that original relationship. So when I healed with my father, and it's so interesting, Everything unfolded from that. When I really, and I am very blessed that my father came to me and apologized. He came to me and he was crying and he said, you've done so much, you've gone so far. I was 38 years old. He goes, and he started to cry and he said, you've done all of this and I can't take any of the credit. <laughs> and am I to be crucified the rest of my life? And I just sat there, and I always waited for this moment, because I was going to tell him like I had never told anybody. For all the abuse and the battering, and my mother and my sister who took her own life, all of that. And I was filled with such compassion for this man who did not have uh, parents that loved him. That my mother said he was born in Oklahoma, and he was just, he went from pillar to post of people that didn't really want him. And so he carried all of that, that self-hatred and that energy with him. And he could not fight his demons because we surrender to our demons. When we surrender to our demons and our addictions, they suddenly have no power over us. And we open the space to allow God to do what God does best by means of each and every one of us. We attract our relationship through resonance, through vibration and frequency. When we are vibrating uh, at a healthy frequency, not that we don't have stuff to work through, but when it comes up to be mature enough to say, this has come up, I'm feeling insecure, I'm feeling abandoned, I'm feeling this, all this is coming up. It comes up so we can heal it. It surfaces up and out so that we can release it back to its native nothingness from whence it came. Because the truth is, it really isn't a people, even though it looks like people, places or things. And when I healed with uh, my uh, ex-politician husband, I invited him to my 50th birthday and he, he came and I said, I am so happy that you came to uh, my party. And he said, I wouldn't have missed it. You are the greatest influence of my life. And when you can just open and be healing and, and loving, the ground of being is love. We really do love one another. Love one another as I have loved you was the great commandment, as I have loved you. To feel that God love, that we are created in the image and likeness of God, that it is good and it's very good. And that when we find a partner and we unify with that partner, that sexual energy is really, that intimacy is absolute coalescing with the divine through your partner, through one another. This moves beyond all of it, straight, gay, uh, uh, it doesn't matter because we're all part of that humanity as we gather and we feel that love energy. And if we hold any grudges toward anything, every Friday on Facebook, uh, we have Forgiveness Friday. And it's a set of old, old hands. And it says, forgive everyone for everything. And I often think about uh, the trial of the green, uh, the serial killer, the Green River Killer, and how that father, he said, if I hate you, 
that won't bring back my daughter. So I refuse to hate you. Instead, I have compassion for you because this is how my daughter would have wanted it. And I pray for you. And he walked on. Well, others were very condemnatory and cathartic, rightly so, because it's a horrendous thing to lose, to feel that loss in relationship. And it was interesting when my husband made his transition. Uh, his family never spoke to me again. I was just sharing this last night. Uh, he, they never spoke to me again. I was 32 years old, and they were afraid that I was going to ask them for money. So they never spoke to me again. And uh, I had a seven-year-old that I was raising. And uh, years later, my a favorite nephew, the one that does love me and, and speaks to me and thinks I'm awesome, uh, it's not, oh, it's nice to have a relative that thinks you're awesome. And he said to my daughter, he said, you were so, so lucky that you didn't have to be in the energy of grandma and grandpa and all the negative, you know, even dad, so, and everyone's so negative. Oh, I envied you all these family things we went to that you weren't invited to. You were the lucky one. You were the lucky one. So we didn't vibrate at the same frequency. They didn't understand our way of life and new thought. They thought that we were devil worshipers, you know. And uh, it's just because we don't believe in hell. And if you believe in hell, you get to go there, right? <laughs> and we believe that heaven and hell are states of mind. And that in that resonance, there was a great samurai, a great warrior. He wanted to know the difference between heaven and hell. And he traveled many, many miles up many, many mountaintops. And finally, he came to the great guru, the master. And he said, tell me, master, I have traveled far and wide. I want to know the difference between heaven and hell. And the old master sat there and he said, you, the great samurai warrior who thinks he can do anything, doesn't know the difference between heaven and hell. And at that moment, he just felt the energy of anger so much that he unsheathed his sword and he went to strike. And the master said, that is hell. And he was so overcome with the master willing to risk his life to teach a lesson. He sheathed his sword. He knelt down and prayed. And the master said, that is heaven. That relationship with the divine. So as we acknowledge that we're all in relationship with someone or something, that many of us in here have, have had many relationships and some have passed on. And you always feel that resonance of relationship. You always feel that energy, that connection of oneness because it moves beyond dimensions, absolutely. And the day that my husband passed away, he said, who are those two beautiful women standing next to you? And I said, there's no one standing next to me. And then we had this great, great relationship and a great sense of humor. And I said, you haven't even left yet. You're going out on me already. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized these were his guardian angels to take him home because he kept talking about going home. And then we create other relationships that come in. More love, more energy, more resonance. And finally, you know, how many of us have had adversarial relationships where we're putting each other's down and we think it's cute because we feel insecure or not worthy of a really wonderful relationship, so we put it down or we push people away who love us because we don't have enough self-love within ourselves to embrace the greater circle of life? There's a story about a little nine-year-old girl who shared a dream with her grandpa. And she said, I had a dream, grandpa. I dreamed that I went to the cage to get my canary. And I took it in my hands, and I went to the window, and I opened my hand. And she said, it just sat there. It didn't fly away. And her grandpapa said, why do you think that is, my child? And she said, because it loved me. 
and wanted to be with me, a little nine-year-old girl, because it loves me and wants to be with me. And the truth is, we can take the canary out of the cage and let it fly, and let it fly back to us. Because relationships are about trust. They're about the energy of unconditional love, because we did not weave the web of life, right? We are merely a strand on it. And when we come to the altered relationship, and when we bear our souls, and when we have wounds and things that we need to heal, that the opportunity is there for us to heal it. Because love really is unconditional. And when Schweitzer said, with great unconditional positive regard, one for the other, that the energy absolutely expands because we are merely a strand on the web of life. And what we do to the web, we do to each individual strand. And Connie shared with me last night at Lee's party, she said, I didn't know who you were, I just saw this uh, uh, woman uh, who was speaking to someone at the hotel where you were having a service and the hotel was kicking out a homeless woman. And she said, you stood your ground and you said that this homeless person, I don't care where they come from, is part of our community and she will stay here and be with us and receive what she came here to get. And she said, you were so firm about it. And the uh, personnel at the hotel, you know, agreed. And, but also said that, you know, she would have to leave immediately following because I guess she caused a little trouble at the hotel. But she did stay and she did receive her message. And she is, and I feel this, was as close to God as I was ever going to get. Because Mother Teresa said, everyone in our energy field is a Christ, and sometimes in distressing disguise. And in our relationships, and, I, and it's interesting, I'm usually the one that initiates getting together in my relationships, and I used to think, why am I always the initiator, <laughs> right? And I, you know, it, it came to me that people really see my life as so full, and you know, I go over to seas a lot and speaking, and so involved, that uh, they don't want to like infringe, and I really got that. Clayton's about the only one that just calls me just because. You know, <laughs> I'm gonna be on love ya. And when I got that, it was just like, of course, of course. And it wasn't like, why do I always, you know, the whole <coughs> thing? Because what? It's unconditional, isn't it? It's absolutely unconditional. And this is why I love our way of life. He drew a circle that shut me out. That love and I had the wit to win. We drew a circle that took him in. And that made all the difference. Because we're each going somewhere, and where is it? Higher, Higher yet. yet. Higher yet. Where? Higher, Higher yet. yet. Where? Higher, Higher yet. yet. And so it is. So it is. So it is. God Thank bless you. you.